Corlo just out here conducting symphonies. <laughs> you could call it. This? How do you beat this guy? <laughs> oh yeah, show it to me again. I'll watch it. I'll watch it twice. This is how you do a recap. It was too good to be a one-off thing. Oh, I didn't even notice like the flashes in the background. It's brilliant. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the war has begun, I guess. Continues to begin. I'm still buzzing from the last episode and that whole that whole sequence. And going to go is nowhere to be found. They ran off and, you know, they're out checking on their antiques, presumably. They just dip in and out as they please. <laughs> there are many signs of a great show. One of them is when you can just lose your, arguably, your two central protagonists for a couple episodes and it's just as good. And you still have the anticipation that they're going to join. Assault X and X Impact for real. Well, this is York New City, so prepare for showtime. It is York New! Ladies and gentlemen, we are being held momentarily due to train traffic ahead of us. Alleged train traffic. He just got vacuumed. God bless all of you. Speaking of the afterlife. And you're gonna need a lot more than Melody and Basho, honestly. The ambulance, yeah. Alright, right, right, there you go, there you go. We're getting there. I think you need to cancel that ambulance. Creepy guys become so valuable, so essential. Yeah, but the mob's newly hired assassins might change the tide or not. Okay, I didn't realize that was Krolo. Yeah. They get it. This guy already reminding me of the doctor from My Hero Academia. When does showtime begin? <laughs> yeah, that's New York accurate. I'm trying. Actually, Kurpika killed one of them, so. What the hell are you? Shut the hell up. <laughs> Leave. Some of them really want to get vacuumed and it shows. And they really let you know. If any consolation weapons won't won't help. And the Phantom Troop did this with ten people. There they are. A little bit busy. A little bit busy. Did they ever? We've learned this. We're all up to speed. We all went through the same learning curve. Yes. Damn, Kalua applying leverage. Whoa, Kalua got pissed. Or determined. Huh, mixed feelings here. Because on the surface, I think Kurapika's concern for the kids is good. There is an element of that noble desire to avoid them getting hurt. Though I would say my usual thing of like, you gotta let people make their own choices and help when they want to help, assuming their eyes are open. There's something else here though, I think, and maybe this is reading into it a lot, but Kurapika has this gut sense that what he's doing is not great. And Gon and Kalua are friends and people who know you entering a situation where you feel you're not doing something great heightens the attention to that fact, which you're trying to put to the side in order to do what you're trying to do. Kurapika is so different or has gone such a different path than what Kalua and Gon have previously seen from him. Kurapika would sort of be forced to reckon with that lens 
which would be potentially really painful, difficult. I've experienced this and seen this with myself and friends where like there's this natural instinct to push the people you care about away because you don't want them to see you at your worst. And crucially, you don't want to see yourself at your worst through that clearer lens. But I think typically in those situations, the answer is the opposite. You want to go closer to those friends. You want that lens. You need that, that dose of truth. There's a line from The Godfather that always stuck with me where Tom is giving really sound reasons advice, but they've decided to go to war. So they replace him temporarily with the saying that we need a wartime consigliere. That has come up so many times in my life. Like I have something I want, and like, I'm kind of trading my values a little bit, but I've decided on this course of action. Like I just want it too badly. I'm compromised. And I ask my friends for help and they give me like really good sound, reasonable advice, which is counter to what I want. <laughs> and like my instinct is like, oh, I need a wartime concierge right now. But like in The Godfather, those are the moments when you probably most need the real friends and their honest opinions. Curiously what Gon says here. Oh? Kalua just stewing in his anger. Wait, what? <laughs> what? The guy's mourning his dead friend that your friend killed, and that made me so mad. That loyalty, that ferocity. Gon is just an animal. Okay. You, you do that. Yeah, it's a little bit misleading because they're kids, but it's Hunter x Hunter universe. It's not normal. They've kind of earned their place. This guy gets it. Finally. Everyone goes through the same learning curve with the Phantom Troop. You gotta experience it. You just gotta experience the power once and then you know. Then you know. He's being controlled. Did he make him say that too to <laughs> instill fear? Oh no. They're just machines. They're just automatons for my killing pleasure. It's out of control. Where is Kalua's father? He's gonna be the, the trump card turning point. Ooh, I need to see that again. What just happened? His head just popped right off. They make a cute team. Soka just aroused. Nobody can finish a phone call, even. Everyone goes through the same learning curve. How much do you love your job? Oh, his name is Bean. My, my little Bean. I don't know, this is not Uvogin. I think Kurpika's gonna need Gon and Kalua here. There he is. Wow. Wow. The respect that they command. He likes his pens, huh? Very specific. Yeah, I counted out Grandpa. I was <laughs> so focused on Dad that, yeah, I mean, he must be a, a threat. What a father and son team, come to think of it. In hindsight, that actually does add some context. <laughs> like, Father Zoldik had a great father-son relationship, perhaps, and also maybe understands a little bit of the rebelliousness that Kalu is going through. I actually really admire people who are able to successfully continue what their family started with their whole heart and without any kind of regret or lingering curiosities about what they could have done on their own, if that makes sense. Like, I think people get a lot of flack sometimes when they inherit success. It's like, oh wow, you just were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And there are definitely advantages to that, right? But it's not challenge free. I might be overgeneralizing, but I imagine that for most people, in order to be really satisfied with yourself, you have to feel like you using your gifts and talents and hard work and agency pushed yourself to something that you feel accomplished in or satisfied with. I think most people want to know that they made it on their own and it's not always easy to incorporate that. It seems like Daddy Zoldik was able to do that in this field. I mean, he's obviously very accomplished, he probably pushed the limits of his family's business, but you imagine there would be some challenge there initially, right? Like Kalua's experiencing. Grandpa Zoldik, Dad Zoldik, and Kalua kind of forming like a uh, Heihachi Kazuya Jin situation here. Who's gonna throw who into a volcano? 
<laughs> you just can't help but admire. Amazing. Glorious. Gotta respect the art. His Nan is so high, you can't even be bothered to use Nan. Why do they even want money at this point? Do they even want money at this point? They're like a weird exception to what we've seen so far in the show. Where like, Nan is so much more than money. Money just comes naturally. I guess just have a lot of money. Like, so much money. Maybe that changes things. The most money in the world? Ooh, that Gon Kalua phone call kinda did some damage already. Oh, hi. This should be interesting. Is that what he does when he's not sticking pens in people's heads? Really curious to see... Silva? That's the name, right? Silva's techniques. Okay. It begins. The anime is slowing it down for us so we can actually see. It's wasting no time. No monologuing. Or very little monologuing. <laughs> He's taking on two of them too, which is amazing. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Combining the knife. Did he just do that with his hair? The nen power of his hair, a strand of his hair. Here's the monologuing. Oh, so it's not copying only. It's draining Nen. It's rendering them useless. Yeah, that definitely would be overpowered, right? His voice sounds really familiar. Okay, Dad, I will just kill you for the mission. And book! Bandit's secret? Was it a death note? So we can use things he steals. A little bit of all for one in this. And a fake ghetto. <laughs> a normal person would run. Dragon Lance. Suddenly this apron not looking too intimidating. You never know with Nan though. How though? He looks awfully calm, which makes me very nervous. Knowing the show and knowing Nan, there's another layer to it. It's just when you think you figured it out, that's when you're most in danger. I want to see that episode. I'm okay with the flashback. Krolo was quiet for a while, but like, finally his greatness is being unveiled. Oh, all right. Giant energy balls. Double wielding spirit bombs. Yeah, but there's no way. There's no way that did it. <laughs> what unexpected development. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't believe you, narrator. The unexpected development is like, he's fine. He's totally fine. It probably has the upper hand because, I mean, this is, this is Nen. At this level of Nen, it feels like, oh God, it just keeps coming back to deception, doesn't it? God, the Hunter exam was so right. It was so right for all that criticized it. It's all about deception. If you're at the top level of Nen, it's not about power. It's about the chess moves. Your attack has to be unseen in order for it to work or like pinning people between two impossible choices. Gon, Kalua, Hunter, Psychopedia. Chalnark, I gotta stop calling him Armin. Sorry. And 
I'll add, Boyce has a sunny and pleasant disposition. He's quite nice to have around. And good friend. Can't speak highly enough of Shalnark. This episode, all four main characters largely absent. It's just like the meeting of the greats. As far as we know, these are the most powerful end users, right? That we've been introduced to. Ahsoka seeming like he's very high, but not quite at this level. Even as his arc continues to play out and develop, there's so many wild cards. The fact that Kalua, his father is here and that they're related, obviously. Kurapika kind of pushing Gon and Kalua out, but like obviously needing them. Leorio doing something, <laughs> maybe. Checking on antiques. And of course, like always, Ahsoka lurking in a state of patient arousal. Now it seems like it would be a great time, if ever, to pick off Krolo or other Phantom Troop members. 